It is Devin McCourty, who is brought to you by the top defense. If you've been injured, Catches Law Group. At Catches, you pay nothing unless they win. They are the official law firm of the New England Patriots. And Devin McCourty is on the Harbor One Hotline this morning. Hey, Dev. What's happening? How you doing? How you doing? Doing well. How you guys doing? Doing great. Um, you played with Gerard Mayo. You know the man well. Um what are your thoughts on uh, how he does as the the fifteenth head coach of the New England Patriots? I'm excited for him. I think uh, obviously, you know, when you come off uh, a season where you have the number three pick, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, but I think he's a, a guy that's up for the challenge. I think he's been he's been preparing to get an opportunity to be a head coach as soon as he got back into coaching. He, I remember talking to him. He's like, "If I'm going to do this." I want to be a head coach. Like I want to reach the top of the top. So um, I, I'm excited. I think he's a. I think the thing he does well, uh, his best attribute, he's a leader of men, and I think that's what you need uh, in this league. I think when you look around the league, a lot of these newer coaches, um, no matter if they're offense or defense, their success comes from the team believing in them. And I think the Houston Texans with D'Amico Ryan is a, a prime example of a team that was really bad last year. Draft some good players. Free agency, Nick Casero did a good job. But it's those guys. Like, they believe in the head coach. They take on his attitude. And I think Gerard has that same kind of uh, leadership and personality uh, to go lead a group. We played some audio earlier from Tom Brady, who said that uh, one of the things about Bill that he liked was that Bill told you how it was, and he wasn't afraid of hurting his players' feelings. Is is that how you feel about Bill? And is is that something that you think when it comes to some of these younger coaches that, that you you may have been talking about um is an issue for them? No, I don't I don't think I think we think like a younger coach means that they they're not straightforward. I think uh I was even talking to a group of guys that played in New England or playing elsewhere and they said that the thing they miss was no matter if you liked it or not, you knew where you stood in the Patriots organization because Bill would tell you, you know, what you needed to work on. Sometimes even if the team was debating on keeping you or not, if you had any issues with your contract or anything. So, um, but I think being a younger coach and having a different personality doesn't mean that you have to, you know, be everybody's best friend. There's nothing wrong with still being straightforward uh, and telling people how it is. I think that's more, I think with Bill, that was more of who he is. That That's his personality. That's who he is as a person. That's his character to not lie to you or, or try to BS you. It's just tell you what it is, whether you like it or not. So I think that has to do with the person more than like the age or, you know, what you might believe. And I think however you are as a person comes to light when you're a head coach. Steph, one of the things that you talked about with Mayo, something that he could be doing is preparing for, obviously preparing for the number three overall pick. Do you believe that he's going to have enough input to change, you know, whatever the direction is for that pick in, in the mind of Robert Kraft? Are they going to give him the ability where his voice will be heard on who they should draft there at number three overall? I think it'll be a group effort. I think it'll probably resemble more of what you see from other teams. I think when you turn on the, the you know, I think one of the videos that's been going viral on social media <clears throat> was Les Snead and Sean McVay talking about drafting Puka Nakua, where they're sitting in there talking about what they like about the player, what Snead likes, what McVay likes. I think you'll see something more like that of how they build a personnel group uh, with Matt Groh and Elliot Wolf and those guys, you know, with Gerard involved in there, but I think that'll be a combination of different people. It won't just be, you know, one person deciding uh, where they go. It'll be a combination of who do we probably agree on the most? Who do we all like? How does it best? How does he best help the team? Uh, does he feel a need? Like, I think all those things will come into play um, where it resemble more of other teams, what they put together as their kind of front office and personnel staff. Devin, when it comes to Steve and Brian Belichick, do you see them leaving with Bill, or uh, there's been reports that they've been offered to stay here in New England? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I think for both those guys, they've now been coaching for a little while, um, and I've always said it. I think with Steve, you know, obviously he's more in the spotlight because of his role with the Patriots. You know, 
he'll never he never gets enough credit for what he's done as a defense because you know obviously coach under his dad and and you know what his dad being Bill, but I think it's time for people to give him credit. This defense has continued to be one of the top defenses in the league, no matter how the offenses perform, no matter if they lost Matt Judon and Christian Gonzalez. So he's put together quite a resume, but he never gets any credit. So I think there's that aspect of maybe wanting to branch out on their own um, and maybe stay in New England. But then there's an aspect of, like, you get to coach with the best coach to ever coach the game. And, and you have that security of, you know, he trusts you, he knows how you coach, he can help you get better as a coach. Um, so that you can follow that and stay on that path that when someday he does retire, you're the best coach that you can possibly be because of the time you spent with him. So um, I couldn't I couldn't make that decision. I'm not sure where those guys' heads are at or, or what they're deciding, um, but I know that's a really hard decision to make, um, especially if you already have an offer on the table. But um, I think both those guys have improved as coaches from the time they've gotten in. So uh, it could they could feel like this is the step they want to take and stay. Um, but I could also easily see them following Bill uh, and wherever he lands next. When it comes to the Cowboys job maybe being in play for Bill, knowing him as you know him, could he deal with Jerry Jones? Well, I don't know Jerry Jones, but I think from, you know, being in the studio uh, Sunday, Jason Garrett was there, and that was that was our, all of our hot topic. Of, do we think there's any chance that these guys could, you know, possibly work together uh, and make it work. So I think it would probably take both of them deciding how they want to move forward in any type of, you know, relationship um, to coach because from the outside looking in, the way both those guys, obviously I know Bill and the way Jerry Jones is perceived, you think no way that they will work together. But I think sometimes after, you know, two people have been doing something for a long time, they can make the decision of, hey, I want to really make this work because I think it's the best going forward. Um, but I, I think honestly, if you say right now, it would be a hard, a hard thing to see happening. But you never know. Devin, Greg asked this earlier, and it was a great question. We'd love to hear your response. Why is Bill Belichick no longer the coach of the Patriots? If you could just boil give one that, reason, give one reason why you believe that that okay, that he's not the coach anymore. Right. Um, I think one of the biggest things is time. Um, I heard. I forgot who I was talking about Mike Tomlin. And the thing is when you're somewhere for a long time, people stop listening to you. People stop understanding, you know, the things that you're trying to coach them up or tell them to do. It's the same way parents feel when their kids become teenagers. Um, It it becomes a tall task to try to get them to understand what you're telling them. And I think Bill's going to go into a new stadium and it's going to be like, Oh, Mm. AAF phone. Football stuff. So I think that's going to be a unique thing. We kind of lost you, but you're going to say Bill's going to have essentially a new voice because he, they haven't heard what he says before, wherever he ends up going. Exactly. And they're going to want to hear it more than anybody, which for the Patriots, you've heard that for a long time. And you even had like when guys come in the locker room, you hear me saying, the same things that I've heard Bill saying. So they're like, man, I'm tired of hearing this, What you won't have anymore. It'll all be brand new to everybody. I want to see if you might join me on my new island when I ask you this question. Who would you, in in your heart of hearts, who would you like to see win a Super Bowl first? Bill Belichick elsewhere or your beloved New England Patriots? Oh, (laughs) Uh, I don't know if I, in a perfect world, I would say Bill wins first and then the Patriots win next year and the year after. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's right? Cause, that's because he didn't don't grow up a Pats fan. It, don't you want him to go out there and, and do it elsewhere and, and prove the naysayers wrong? Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard. Like, you have this one, you have this organization that's won six times, but this coach has won those six times, but it's all about like, we all want to see Bill win one, not as a Patriot, the same way we all wanted to see Tom win one, not as a Patriot. I think we all have that same kind of hope and dream that like he leaves and the next year he wins the Super Bowl. Um, because I think, you know, all of Tom's former teammates, I know I felt that way. Like 
I was super happy. Like, I was in the game when he won for Tampa. And I think all the guys that, that Bill has coached would feel the same way. Um, and I know the guys that play with Gerard, you know, I'm, I would be begging Gerard for a ticket. He's in the Super Bowl wanting to be down there celebrating with them. So um, it, it's a tough decision. You, you would hope they went back to back. I always go for the franchise, you know. That obviously that's the team you grow. Well, he didn't grow up here, so yeah. he's not like a. Yeah, di- so I was never, I was never a Patriots fan. <laughs> right. So for me, as a Patriots fan, I mean, yeah, I want to see Bill be successful wherever he goes, but I still want, I want the team that I root for. I want to see them win a championship before anybody else. I didn't like seeing Brady win one and our team sucking. <laughs> and that's that's all that is is a knife in your side. Well, uh, Devin was on that team, by the way. Well, no, when he won in Tampa Bay. I know, but you're saying well, that. The, no, you're, you're, Craig, saying, you're right. Yeah, Devin. I was on that. I was on that shitty team. I agree with him. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's the Ty Law Swear Jar right there. <laughs> that's that, my that SE team. We yeah. have to dump out of that. That's First my point, time, Devin. I love it. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, you were. De- Dev, when yeah. you <laughs> when you look at Gerard, what what do you think might be the biggest challenge for him? Um, obviously following a Bill Belichick. I know you talked about sometimes they got tired of you hearing Bill's message. Do you think he has this completely new message, or, or, or is it a challenge to maybe a message that maybe some guys have heard, even though it's a different person giving it to him? Yeah, I think he's going to deliver it differently. Uh, I got to interview um, Stafford, so I was at the Rams facility, and one of the, the tight end coach, Nick Kelly, was with me in New England. I was talking to him, and he was like, He's enjoying being down there, the different things and all of that. But he was like, fundamentally, what McVay is teaching is the same thing that he was in New England. You know, tough football, smart players, all of that stuff. He said, but it's a, just a different way of teaching it. And he said it's been awesome for him to be in that now. And I think it's the same thing. The foundation the Patriots are built on, like what Bill preaches, like that is good stuff. That's why it's won and was sustainable for years. It's because it's good stuff. I think Mayo will continue to have all of those things, playing the game the right way, you know, being dependable, you know, being tough. Like, all those things will still be a part of the Patriot philosophy, but I think how you deliver messages is what really goes out and and speaks to the team. I think that'll be totally different. I think his biggest challenge will be just dealing with all of the the non-football things as a head coach. You know, when you coach in football – you know how to coach football. You know X's and O's. You know all of that stuff. When you take over as a head coach, you now have to do all of the day-to-day things, the little um, kind of minutia things that you don't, you never saw before, the kind of behind-the-scenes things that he'll have to get used to because it's his first time being a head coach. And then you're following a guy that did it for 24 years, so he kind of mastered all of that. So now you have to try to hurry up and get to a certain standard um, that was set by the greatest to ever do it uh, as a daunting uh, challenge and task. Um, but I think the good thing is you got to learn from that person as well. So you get to implement some of those things as you move forward. Um, but I think those are the challenges that no matter where he went or who he followed, he would have to rise and, and you know, take care of those things and get better at them day by day. All right, Devin, before you go, divisional round this weekend, who you like getting through to Vegas? Um, I'm going to stick with the Ravens, um, and not to just be obvious, I'm not going to number one seed. I'm going to say the sleeper team, uh, will be the Detroit Lions. Wow. Dan Campbell. All right. I'm headed, I'm headed to Detroit, uh, Sunday too. <laughs> so I can't right. wait to see what that, that stadium's like. Uh, all right. They got a casino uh, right downtown too in the dirty D. <laughs> Uh, and Devin, yeah, I know. <laughs> Devin, before you go, I don't know if you saw the Wickersham piece uh, that came out, but did you ever hear Robert Kraft refer to Bill Belichick as the great intelligent man? No. Okay. Like in a meeting? Just anywhere. That's what the story says, that Robert Kraft referred to Bill Belichick as a negative, that he was, quote, the great intelligent man. No, I didn't see the piece either, but no, he. I mean... I don't know. I think that's weird to talk about somebody like that. The great intelligent man. Right. I don't know. I've never heard that one. <laughs> All right. Devin, as always, yeah. thanks for taking the time. I yeah. think we'll talk to you again next week, right? We're not done. Yeah. You, you let me know, man. Yeah. You said mm-hmm. you're staying on the show forever. You don't go. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Keep it up. Yeah. I, I, 
I got free. I got free Wednesdays, man. Yeah. Okay. All right. Shout us out on um, uh, yeah. NBC uh, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah give us we're some. always watching. <laughs> all right. I'll- I'll talk about how Courtney didn't invite me to the, the uh, Christmas Eve party. <laughs> uh, hey, you were invited. <laughs> Everybody was. All right, uh, we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>